Merry Christmas to you. Will you step in, please, sir? Uh, Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. Yes, sir. Is there anything I can do for you, sir? Well, if it is quite convenient, I should like to speak with a member of the firm. Mm. You, uh, you wish to see me, I presume, sir? Yes. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley's been dead these seven years. Oh. Dead as a doornail. Died seven years ago, this very night. Oh. We took the liberty of calling on you at your chambers, Mr. Scrooge, uh, thinking that you would have finished business for the day, but we failed to make anyone here. That's not surprising. I'm the only person who lives there. Quite. Consequently, we have called here. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, it seems more than usually desirable to make some slight provision for the poor and destitute who suffer terribly at this present time. Many thousands are in want of common necessities. Hundreds of thousands are in want of common comforts, sir. Are there no prisons? Yes, plenty of prisons. The union workhouses are still in operation, eh? They are still. I wish I could say they were not. Warlaw and the treadmill are in full vigor then, eh? Both very busy, sir. Uh, very irritant, sir. I thought from what you said that something had occurred to interfere with them in their useful course. Very glad to hear it, sir. Very glad to hear it. Under the impression that they scarcely furnish Christmas cheer of mind and body for the multitude, some few of us are endeavouring to raise a fund to buy the poor of London meat and drink and means of warmth. We choose this time because this is the time of all others when want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. Now, what shall I put you down for? Nothing. Nothing? Oh, oh, I see. You wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone, sir. Since you ask me what is my wish, that is my answer. I don't make many myself at Christmas. I can't afford to make a lot of idle people many. I hope to support the institutions we've just mentioned. They cost enough. People are badly off, they'd better go there. Many can't go there. Many would rather die. Well, if they'd rather die, they'd better do it. And decrease the surplus population. Besides, excuse me, sir, I don't know that. But you should know it. It's not my business, sir. A man's got enough to do in this world to mind his own business. Without interfering with a lot of other people's, mine occupies me constantly. Good evening, sir. Allow me to express my regret, sir, if I have said anything. Good evening. Good evening. May I inquire, Mr. Cratchit, what you're doing with that shovel full of coal? Why, I beg your pardon, sir, but the outer office is intensely cold, and my fire... No, no, your fire. I should have said your fire, sir. Yes, sir. It shows symptoms of going out, and I thought I might venture to replenish it with a small quantity of coal. Yeah. Well, of course, you know, it's very really evident to me, you know, Mr. Cratchit, that you and I left apart. Oh, oh I see no help for it, sir. You don't pay for the coal, so you can afford to be reckless. Therefore, very evident to me, sir, you know, that my interest is not your interest. Nor my welfare, your welfare. Get on with your work, sir. That'll keep you warm enough. I'm not cold. Why should you be? And I'm your senior <coughs> by a great many years, I fancy. All about a small shovel full of coal. And then none of your mumbling, you know, none of your mumbling. You, you have a wife and family to support, I understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many children have you got? Around half a dozen, sir. Three boys and three girls. Tut, tut, tut. Can I afford a wife? Yes, sir. Eh? Uh, I mean, no, sir. Have I any children? I don't know, sir. Eh? No. No, sir. How much am I constrained to pay you a week for your services? 
15 shillings, sir. Ah. Be to your interest, sir, to see that you're worth it. I mean that, I'm sure. I do mean it, sir. What right have you to be buried? What reason have you to be buried? You're poor enough. Come then. What right have you to be dismal? What reason have you to be morose? You're rich enough. Ah. Humbug. Oh, don't be cross, Uncle. How can I help being cross, sir, when I live in such a world of fools as it is? A merry Christmas. What's Christmas time to you, sir? It's a time for paying bills without money. Time for finding yourself a year older. Uh, not a penny of it, sir. If I had my way, sir, every fool who goes about saying Merry Christmas should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of olive through his heart. He should. Uncle! Nephew, you keep Christmas your way. Let me keep it in mind. Keep it? But you don't keep well, it. Well, let me leave it alone, then. Much good has it done you. Much good will it ever do you. It's the only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut hearts freely. And therefore, though it's never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. Here, here. Here, here. Mr. Cratchit, if I hear another word from you, you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. Dear, 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 dear. Quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder you don't go into Parliament. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. I'll see you. But why? Why? Why did you get married? Because I fell in love. Because I fell in... Good evening. But you never came to see us before that happened. Why give that as a reason for not coming now? Good evening, sir. But I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Well, you won't get it, so you won't be disappointed, will you? We've never had a quarrel to which I've been party. So why not let us part friends? Good evening, sir. Well, I'm sorry with all my heart to find this a relative, but I've made the trial in homage to Christmas, and I'll keep my Christmas humor to the last. So a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good evening, sir. And a Happy New Year. You're a noisy devil. That's what you are, sir. Merry Christmas, Bob Gretchen. And the same to you, sir, and many of them. And not forgetting your good lady, Mrs. Fred. Thank you, Gretchen. A Merry Christmas to you. A Merry Christmas. to quit your work, I notice. It's seven o'clock, sir. That clock's fast. By the way, I... I suppose you'll want all day off tomorrow, eh? Well, sir, if, if, if it's quite convenient... It isn't convenient. It isn't fair. If I was to stop half a crown for it, oh, you'd be mightily ill-used. I'd be bound, wouldn't you? Don't think I'm ill-used, do you? When I have to pay a whole day's wages. No work. It only happens once a year, sir. That's a pretty excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Well, I, I suppose you've got to have it. Yeah, there's the key. You see, sir, that you're here all the earlier next morning. Good night, sir, and a Merry Christmas. Ah, humbug.
continue to enjoy themselves. Call silence for the loyal toast. My lord, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for the right honourable, the Lord Mayor of London. My lord. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, her most gracious majesty, the Queen. People out of the witch.
Nuremberg. Ebenezer Scrooge, for only you can see me. What you want with me? Much. Who oh, are you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. In life? Why do you trouble me? It is required of everyone that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. My spirit never walked beyond the narrow limits of our money-changing hall. So I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger anywhere. You are fettered. Why? I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it, link by link. Would you know the weight and length of the coil you bear yourself? Speak words of comfort to me, Jacob Marley. Speak words of comfort. Comfort? I have none to give. I am here to warn you, to save you, if that be possible. To warn? To save me? From what? From such a fate as mine. To wander through the world and witness what I cannot share, but might have shared on earth and turn to happiness. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business. Mankind would have been my business. Charity, forbearance, benevolence, all were my business as they should be yours. 
Now heed me, for my time is short. You will be haunted by three spirits. Without their visit, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. You shall behold the visions of a Christmas past, a Christmas present, and a Christmas yet to come. Expect the first when the clock strikes midnight tonight. Molly! Look to see me no more. Molly! show you the things that have been. Look back beyond the gulf of vanished years. The money is due and must be paid. But, sir, that's impossible. Then I shall have no alternative but to take immediate steps to recover it. But, sir, you must see that if... That is the way I conduct my business. You don't mean... Sell us up? That is precisely what I do mean. But, sir, I couldn't work in the hospital. Mr. Scrooge, I beg of you. Good day. You can't do this. You can't be so unjust. Give us a little more time. A week. Please. 